Today, I'm getting real about science-based dog training, including three obstacles you must overcome to use scientific research in your training. And if that leaves you feeling overwhelmed, lost, and confused, I will also let you in on a little secret to fast-track your success in the dog training world. Hey guys, what's up? It's Dr. Melanie. Science-based dog training has become vogue and incredibly trendy, but I've been hearing numerous misconceptions and blatant lies floating around when it comes to citing scientific research to make a point. I lived the life of a math scientist for 10 years, first in Germany and then at Columbia University in New York. I published 16 peer-reviewed articles and wrote a multitude of research grants. So in this video, we are going to discuss the three biggest science hurdles and misconceptions. Then I'm going to share with you a secret weapon that will give you a significant advantage and has the potential to change the world, not just for dogs. So make sure you watch until the end of the video. But first, if you are new to the Canine Decoded community, welcome. This channel aims to create a platform for unbiased real talk about dog behavior with a sprinkle of neuroscience, psychology, and other scientific disciplines. For more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe below and don't forget to ring that bell to be notified when my next video goes live. All right, let's get started. I personally get excited when I hear research reveals, studies show, or science-based dog training. These phrases are meant to advance a conversation and boost credibility without letting opinions interfere. But there's so much more to it. Here's hurdle number one, access. We scientists tend to live in our own silos. When I was working at Columbia University, none of my friends understood exactly what the heck I was doing in my lab. My working hours were erratic and, this is crucial, what you publish is meant to be read by other scientists and researchers, not by the general public. Most of the time, as a non-researcher, you don't even have access to it. So if you wanted to read this review, you simply can't exceptions exist, but generally you would have to pay around $40 per paper. To be informed about the latest insights on a specific topic though, you would need to read at least 10 papers or reviews, costing you up to $400. But who does that? Alternatively, you can wait 5 to 10 years until the most significant insights make their way into a textbook. However, you won't be up to date and you'll miss out on nuances that I often found crucial to answering some of the most intriguing questions in dog behavior. For example, this paper talks about conditional discrimination training for unwanted behavior such as jumping up on people. But I'm sorry, you don't have access to it. Okay, let's say you're willing to invest the money. You're ready to sacrifice the next 66 lattes to buy 10 research papers. You will then face next obstacle, dry content. When I was writing my PhD thesis, my supervisor told me that my language was too flowery. I had to eliminate all filler words or unnecessary explanations to keep the content as dry and boring as possible. Yeah, that's science for you. I steer chatter during my three hour long defense simply because I wore red shoes. And some researchers believe that if you don't have anything significant to show, you use color. Colors are considered childish and distracting from scientific insights. Therefore, everything is usually in black and white. Could it be more boring? But maybe you got a lot of grit to read through these papers. Some of them aren't actually that bad. There's still hurdle number three, hypothesis. When I researched the link between the immune system and fatigue, I had to make it very, very clear what my project's goal was. That's what we call a hypothesis. All experiments and analyses you see in a published and peer-reviewed paper are meant to confirm the initial hypothesis and only that, nothing more. So before a scientific finding supports your point of view, you need to make sure that this particular paper examined exactly that. 
For example, this paper looks at the training efficiency of e-color versus positive reinforcement to train the recall command with 30 minutes a day over five days. With this time window, you can only use this paper as a source to conclude that one method is more efficient over the other if you were to train the recall over five days with 30 minutes a day. Doesn't say anything about the efficiency for any other commands or a broader training setup with real life scenarios. Unfortunately, the interests of scientists and in our case, dog trainers and dog owners do not always align. What might be a feasible setup for experiments, here five days, might not be a realistic or advised setup for actual training. Training a good recall, depending on the dog, can take months. The gap between these two worlds has led us down a path of misinformation and clashing opinions. But let's assume you've overcome all the obstacles and found the publication you wanted to support your training style or philosophy with. That's great and an excellent first step, but you're going to have to show it with more than just one paper. Scientists aren't perfect and mistakes happen. Last month, renowned neuroscientist Marc Tissier Levant stepped down from his position as Stanford University's president after his scientific work was found faulty and he was deemed guilty of scientific misconduct. Another example is spinach, which we believed contained 10 times more iron than it actually does. This original scientific paper had a typo and misplaced a decimal point even though it was retracted the myth lived on Popeye probably didn't help so accessibility try content and hypothesis are three serious hurdles to overcome if you want to translate science into practical dog training tips but I promise a powerful weapon which is a simple question you need to ask yourself to bypass all these hurdles and still make the most of the information that's out there the only question that I believe has the power to change the world. I remember sitting in my manager's office at Columbia University one day, leaning over my amazing experiment results and wondering what to do with them. What he told me that day stuck with me. He said, if you want to be a great researcher, not just a good one, but the best, you always have to ask yourself, can I prove myself wrong? If you want to become great at something, maybe being the best dog parent or trainer, you always want to try to prove yourself wrong. You can cherry pick scientific findings to make any point you want. Someone published something that somewhat aligns with what you were saying. We humans spend a lot of time trying to prove that we are right and everyone else who disagrees is wrong. All it does is divide people, confuse dog owners and push us further away from advancing the dog training industry. In this study from 2019, the hypothesis stated that aversive based training methods impact companion dogs inside and outside the training context. One of the markers they used to measure stress was blood cortisol. One training group consisted of positive reinforcement training only. The middle group of this consisted of positive reinforcement with very low levels of aversive methods. There was no significant difference between the cortisol levels of these two groups. You can take these results and argue that the trend shows an increase of cortisol even in the middle group and therefore adds more stress to the dogs. You can also argue that the results say there is no difference and that the upward trend in the middle group just shows short-term stress which is needed for optimized learning. You pick and the data of this one paper will support it. So if you truly want to challenge the status quo and improve the dog's well-being around the world using science, whether you're a researcher, a dog professional, owner or even a politician, you need to challenge yourself first. And that's the most difficult and courageous thing you can do for your dog. I get it though, for professionals who have built their entire business on a certain ideology or training philosophy, pivoting can be incredibly tough. But once you open up and stop trying to be right and instead seek new ideas and study the dogs in front of you, that's when true progress happens. Without this mindset, we might still believe that the earth is flat or we'd be trying to breed faster horses instead of driving cars. You don't need a PhD or lots of money to start. There are many people who summarize and translate scientific findings for you. Keep an open mind and before you subscribe to a certain point of view, try to see if there 
computer science offering a different perspective. Lastly, on behalf of all researchers, I apologize for making science so hard to digest. But if you're up for it, Can I Decode It is all about simplicity, innovation and empathy by translating science into useful tips and methods. So join our community of forward thinking dog owners and on Facebook by clicking the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next time, I'm Dr. Melanie. Tschüssi!